When you start thinking about the structure of a story, key beats, turning points? You know, I think, um, I think you need to keep a reader engaged. I don't think there is a set time, but if you're, you know, 15, 18, 20, 25, 30 pages in and we still have no idea what's going on or there hasn't been that, you know, moment, I, I think you, you kind of need to rethink some things. Um, you know, there's the old saying when you watch a movie, it's that 42 to 46 minute point that usually kind of becomes a slow burn no matter what the movie is. So I know a lot of writers and filmmakers try to make sure that point of the film doesn't lack a spark or an interest because that's a lot of times where people, they're, they're not gonna give up on the film, but they tend to get a little restless. It seems a lot of people take a really long time to get to the point, and I think, and I've learned that as an as a independent filmmaker when you sell your material, it's more about, you know, we have to remember this is a business, and nowadays with phones and tablets and distractions and pets and kids and everything else under the sun going on, we're constantly interrupted. Audiences, when they see your film, unless they're really at a movie theater and truly turn their phones off, are never really 100% immersed in your story. There's always something. There's a noise outside. There's a cat knocking over a vase. It's a kid who's crying because he didn't get his way and he's hungry. And you know, you have to realize that as a filmmaker, what you're up against. And I think to just kinda lull along to tell your story, it's very rare that you're gonna be able to compete with anything. So I think to be able to throw some twists and turns, to engage your audience into some new layers or elements or characters, or what's the point of this movie a little sooner than we used to, I think is happening, needs to happen more often, and I think a lot of writers are starting to figure that out. So then you wouldn't be working some of this out in the treatment stage. It's once you actually start the actual screenwriting process. I've gotten to the point now when I work with writers, I tell them it's got to, you know, it's, it's sadly, um, there's kind of an 11 minute rule abroad that we kind of need to know what this is about and what's going on and what we're signing up for in the first 11 minutes of the actual movie, which is going to tell somebody that's got to happen in the first 12 to 15 pages of the script. Um, and I don't like telling stories that way, but I've also learned the hard way. I've had some, some projects that, you know, hey, if you do this, it'll sell. Hey, if you change this, it will, it will move. And what I've learned is the faster we get to the point in our storytelling, and I know this goes against everything from telling great stories of the old days, but we're living in a new time. And it has really gotten to be about get to the frickin' point. What am I signing up for early? They, they wanna know. It's like, you know, I'll give you an example in the film that I just did that's coming out break even. It's about four kids who find $50 million while scuba diving at a remote island. And we developed this opening and this whole thing and this backstory and why are these kids here and who are they and what's their relationships? And it was basically, yeah, we need to find that $50 million by 12 minutes in. And it's like, well, wait a minute, that doesn't come in until page 30. Well, <laughs> it needs to come in about 12 minutes in. So you, you have to restructure some things. You have to cut scenes, you have to cut backstory because at the end of the day, when you're selling a movie around the world, they're signing up for something. And if you're selling an action film, if you're selling a thriller, if you're selling a suspense story, you better get to it because there's too much competition. There's too many things that are moving fast that'll hold attention because it moves so fast. That's where that MTV generation of cutting came from is we don't know how to tell a good story, so we're gonna cut a bunch of stuff really fast so you're afraid to take your eyes off the screen. And that has now become it's found its way, I think it's found a balance in storytelling with films a little better, but we need to get to the point. And if you look at the older films, uh, some of the, most of the ones that I grew up, you know, Chariots of Fire, The Black Stallion, you know, all these enchanting April, you're looking at like 25, 28, 35 minutes in until you really kind of have an idea. If you watch The Black Stallion, they don't in, in, introduce Mickey, Mickey Ro uh, Rooney's character until about, I think, 48 minutes in. You know, the kid's alone at the island for 30 minutes for crying out loud. Then he gets home and then he's got to reintegrate in school and then all of a sudden the horse runs away and then he goes on this trip to try to find the horse and then there's your co-star. And it was also that way with On Golden Pond. They didn't bring, you know, Jane Fonda in until 25 minutes in. So I don't think those play as much anymore. Um, not saying the films don't hold up as great cinema, but we want to meet the players. We want to know what the game is a lot quicker now. Or even the Stepford Wives, like, 
I mean, then, then that was the like the original. Well, the version. original one. Yeah, I mean, it's just it. long driving scenes with the music, the soundtrack, and yeah. there was something comforting about that. I don't Not know today. if that would work today. But. Well, you know, Quentin did it in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. I think he really exploited the driving scenes. But we're looking at the back of Brad Pitt and Leonardo DiCaprio's head, so you know that makes it a little different. But sure. what I try to tell the independent filmmakers, if you're not getting Brad or Leo as your stars, and I don't even get them as my stars, um, your your international buyers want to get to the point, and we're at a point now where we you know we are able to lock picture, and we don't make different cuts for different markets or parts of the globe. We've kind of learned that what what works comfortably everywhere. You know, there's 54 territories that we sell to around the globe, 100, what is it, 170 countries. And in that, you you have 54 territories. And you want to try to do something that's going to appeal to everybody. And it's hard to please all the people all the time. But getting to the point quickly is one that you can really help sell that movie a lot better if people know what they're signing up for in the first 15, 20 minutes, tops. Well, it's interesting because people seem to get upset when we say, that or we interview people and they say, you know, if a script isn't good by 10 pages in, most people will stop reading it. And so then the comments are, well, you're not giving it a chance. Right. People just don't have the patience anymore. You know, again, I, I hate to revert to it. You go back to, I mean, look at Close Encounters of the Third Kind. Brilliant film. That is a slow burn. I think if that movie was made today, that would be a lot different. Not taking anything away from Stephen who did a great job writing the script. It was based on an experience he had as a kid right. and a great job directing it. But you're gonna tell me that movie today would play at that pace? I don't think so. And you're right. A lot of people say, well, you're not giving it a chance. And most readers will say, God, if it doesn't get me by page eight, I'm done. I think you kind of have to, you know, the executives, you know, there was a trend where all the executives were saying, you gotta find that hook. It's gotta be edgy. You know, I want it to be edgy and grab me, you know, shake me by my, by my lapels by page eight, you know. And so everybody came up with the edgy, crazy opening that just shocked everybody. I don't think I don't think shock and awe is what make people watch a whole movie. People want to be drawn in. They want to care about characters. They want to go along for a journey, and they know what they're signing up for. But you have to make that journey interesting. You want to put some bends in the road. You want to have some interesting things that they're going to pass. And I think you need to occasionally give them a flat tire, throw a rod in the engine. They're going to have to get out, grab their bags, hitchhike, find a ride. You know. I think I just think that's where we are now. People are just so bored. I mean, you look at Twitter. Twitter has an auto feed now. I don't even. I, I can't even go on it anymore because the second I try to read what somebody tweeted, it automatically scrolls, and I can't find the tweet I was reading. And there's no way to stop that. That's just how we're getting our information now. And there's we got to find a balance in storytelling, but that is kind of what what's working right now, and it's frustrating. It's a hard pace to keep up with. 